guys, it's Michelle, and today's video is going to be, I always say one of my favorite videos to film. I guess that's good that I like all my videos, but I just think this video is so interesting. It freaks me out, don't get me wrong, and I hate doing it because it's like scary, but I do find it so dang interesting nonetheless. It is all about reincarnation and stories of children who remember their past lives. When I say nothing freaks me out quite like this, I really mean it. I watch a show called The Ghost Inside My Child and that's where I see a majority of these stories and it's horrifying. It's just, it's so creepy. It's like one o'clock in the morning right now and I'm like by myself filming this. Everyone's asleep and I scared <laughs> but before we get into it i would really like to thank keen for sponsoring this video you guys know i've worked with keen for quite some time now and i absolutely am obsessed so keen is a website that provides access to vetted psychics and spiritual advisors they provide guidance and insight on life's challenges clarity in love relationships careers and more keen is also one of the most affordable ways to get an instant psychic reading by a professional anytime 24 7 which is my favorite part of it because i'd be wanting questions at fucking five o'clock in the morning to tie it into this video i actually decided to ask about something that does freak me out which is my past life i went on keen and i always do the chat uh option you can do a call or you can do a chat and i decided to ask if the psychic could read about my past life and the reading that they gave me was actually super interesting and very intuitive and like it felt really right with me but the psychic basically said that i was a doctor in a past life and that i was a man who like was basically a family doctor but i would do it out of just like healing and just wanting to really really help people and i would actually like not even charge people to be healed because i just wanted to help it made me very happy to see that I was still very giving in a past life. So I really liked it. And you can also get a past life reading as well and it's super interesting. So as a new Keen customer, you will get your first 10 minutes for $1.99. From that point on, pricing depends on which advisor you choose. And all the services are backed with a satisfaction guarantee. I always talk about Keen is so great because you can create a relationship with a psychic or spiritual advisor that you love. And you can do things like setting monthly intentions. You can also do chakra cleansings and just get a general like monthly update on like what's going on with your energy i really like that concept of it also each and every week keen sends out discounts to their users via email and i love this because i always get discounts in my email and it's so great because who doesn't love a discount if you're a current keen user definitely check your email to see what this week's discount is so if you want to try keen for yourself and get yourself a reading definitely go to trykeen.com slash michelle and you will get your first 10 minutes for a dollar 99 i'm telling you guys it's so worth it it is so much fun. I love, love getting readings on there. It's just, it's exciting. It's like a thrill. Like, honestly, it's really fun. Definitely check them out, but let's get into the video. So the first story is one of the ones that always freak me out. It's about the Titanic and kind of, this one's like loosely about the Titanic. Like it goes into something deeper. It is about a boy named Seamus from Oregon City, Oregon. So Seamus was born in December of 2006 and he was a very grown up baby as his parents describe him and others around his parents. They were saying that he would, was just, you know, beyond his years, I guess. He would do things very quickly. He would learn how to hold a spoon quickly, learn how to crawl and walk. It all just happened pretty fast for him. Like he was always above the rate of what a normal child quotes uh would do anyone that i know that has kids i was always like oh the first three months are horrible like the sleeping is so bad but seamus actually would sleep through the night completely when he was very young but then as he got a little bit older the nightmare started as we normally know typically happens in these sort of cases so he began having these really really intense nightmares and he would get up in the middle of the night and go sleep in his parents room because he was just so horrified at the age of three years old Seamus' parents were watching the titanic and Seamus walked out of his room and into the room and his eyes were immediately glued to that tv like he was so interested he like was just so fixated on it and it was so absurd because it's a three-year-old i feel like three-year-olds are really not <laughs> into things unless they're like colorful and like crazy and weird like children's TV shows. But he was so in just obsessed with this movie and he was so into it. And that's when his obsession with ships began. He became so fascinated with ships, he would just continuously draw them over and over again. It did start to concern his parents, like why was he so fascinated with ships? His dad kind of chalked it up to he liked things about history and he thought it was actually pretty cool that he was into this kind of thing. But then it got a little bit grim. Seamus started to become very, very, very afraid of death. 
um, which is odd for a three-year-old. I feel like it's not just something that they think about, but it really was like that from the time he was three till age seven, which was when this whole show was filmed. So his family went on vacation to the Queen Mary, which if you know anything about the Queen Mary, I feel like it sounds terrifying, but actually I don't know if the general public thinks that it's haunted or knows that it's haunted, but I know Shane Dawson did a video on it. It was really scary. It's essentially a really old ship that you can actually like stay on like as a hotel and there's like restaurants and like all that stuff. But they decided to do this because Seamus was so fascinated in ships, they wanted to take their kid on a vacation that he would enjoy. He was so intrigued by everything on the ship, he just like was in his element basically. His mom described him as being calm, but like emotional. Like there was like an emotional attachment that he had to being on the ship that she couldn't really describe. One night after their vacation on the Queen Mary, that is when Seamus started to get really, really scared and saying that he died on a ship that had sunk. His parents started to become very concerned that their child was saying all these terrible things. And whenever they would talk to their friends about it, their friends were, I guess, pretty open-minded people that believed in reincarnation. And they said, what if he was on the Titanic? Like, what if he actually lived it? and then is now in this life. Seamus remembers being 10 years old and he remembers having a 14 year old sister. He said that he remembers the ship was red and black with red and green carpet and that something hit the back of the ship and then it exploded and tilted to its side and then sunk all the way down. He also remembers the lifeboats on the ship being wood but white painted and he remembers this so vividly because he remembers actually being able to get onto the lifeboat, but it was so cold, I guess, at the water that he died. At first, Seamus did think that he was on the Titanic. He thought that that was what he remembered, but then once he got down to the details of the Titanic, the way it sunk, all those information, he decided that the Titanic was not the ship that he was on. So his parents did some research to try to find a ship that matched his description and that had sunk the way that he remembered, and they presented a bunch of different ships to Seamus and he picked out one that really resonated with him. It was the RMS Lusitania, which sunk in May of 1915. And it sunk in the exact way that Seamus described it, basically a torpedo hit the ship and in the back of the ship and then it tilted to its side and sunk. So in order to let this go and move on to his current life, Seamus's parents decided to take their son out on a boat with a wreath that was made of flowers just to do a little memorial ceremony and throw it into the water so that Seamus could put to rest his past life. And it's interesting because anytime this happens, I swear it always works for the kids. They stop having nightmares, they stop being so afraid, and it's pretty crazy that of course happened to Seamus as well. His nightmares began to subside and his anxiety got a lot better. So that's really good for him. And it really freaks me out because why does that always happen? It literally always does, even in the next story that we're gonna talk about. The last story is about a boy named Jacob from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Jacob started to say really strange things to his parents. He would say, why did you take me away from my other family. He thoroughly recalled to this other family and he even repeated often being really angry about it saying like why am I not the firstborn child like I should be the older brother like I am the oldest and even though his older brother was like 12 and a half years older than him he would just persistently say this which was weird to his mom because he was like not an angry kid at all and it was really weird that he would get so worked up about something that like obviously she can't control who's the oldest and youngest. So it's really weird. He was a pretty calm child, but he did definitely have nightmares as usual. And he would also suffer from extreme headaches. One day Jacob's mother was watching him draw pictures and he drew something really creepy. He just continuously would draw these shadow people with red eyes and they looked scary as hell. I don't like it. And then he would also draw a man with like a top hat, but it was like a shadow man. And he would say that the man with the hat, he would call him the hat man, would like taunt him and bully him. When he was like trying to go to sleep, he would be like, oh, Jacob, like there's five steps to the bathroom light. Like, can you make it there safely? Like, can you make it? Like, just like so creepy. Like, I'm literally so scared if my fucking four-year-old was saying that to me, I'd be like horrified. <laughs> so at that point, Jacob began to tell his mother about the day that he was murdered, which is obviously something really terrifying to hear from your child. He basically said that he could see himself in the woods and then all of a sudden he turned around and someone hit him over the head and then he could see a little bit, but his eyes like had blood in them. So he couldn't see fully, but he could see somebody standing over him with an aluminum baseball bat. This was when Jacob's mother began 
to wonder if this was a past life experience that Jacob was remembering. They kind of thought like maybe this linked to the reason why Jacob had such severe headaches because obviously he remembers being hit in the head in this past life. So Jacob's mother decided to do some research of teens who were killed with a baseball bat. She came across a boy named Sean who was 14 years old when he just awful, awful story. It was so sad. He basically was new in town. He's from Massachusetts. And there was like this school bully and the bully kind of lured him into the woods and killed him with a bat. And it's just, it's so awful and it's so upsetting. And, you know, he didn't even know Sean well. And he just like, Sean didn't have many friends yet because obviously he's a new kid. So I don't know, it's just, it's horrible, it's so sad. Sean was also the older brother to a younger sister, which also matched Jacob's connection. So Jacob's mother shared her research with Jacob and he felt very connected to Sean and he said that this was him in a past life. So Jacob and his mother decided to actually go to Massachusetts to meet up with Sean's mother. Sean's mother had a very emotional attachment to Jacob right away. She asked him for a hug and she said that she could smell her son on him. Like she just, it felt like her son. She even said that the expression in Jacob's eyes was Sean. Like she was like, it's him for sure. And she even said, quote, I think Sean found his way home. That's how I really feel. She also offered Jacob to call her if he ever had any new memories or any questions or anything like that. And she really, really felt like Jacob was Sean reincarnated. After that, they visited Sean's memorial and got the closure that Jacob felt he needed. And at that point, his headaches and nightmares basically completely diminished. So once again, super interesting. And it's very interesting because I haven't seen one of these episodes where they actually meet the family. And it's just so like striking to see something like that. Like, I can't even imagine what that's like. Um, and I'm just really happy that the mother really felt connected to Jacob because I hope that gave her some closure as well as him. And it's just so crazy to, it's just, I, I don't have any explanation for it and I think that's why it scares me so much. Those are the stories that I'm going to be talking about today. So that is it. If you guys like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if you have any past life experiences or know anybody I would love to know or just what you think about these past life experiences. Let me know in the comments below. But that is it. Thank you again to Keen for sponsoring this video. Like I said, if you want to get a reading, go to trykeen.com slash Michelle and you will get your first 10 minutes for $1.99. But yeah, that is it. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram because I'm always posting really dope ass shit on there. Subscribe for new videos every week and I will see you guys later. Bye.